Oh, I wasn't. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> All right. Were we were we here yesterday? Did we get beyond this yesterday? We finished them. We did E. Okay. Did we start talking about this? Did we do any of these? Okay. So we have this rule that we learn in pre-calc one and forget that my base, any base, raised to the x can be wrote <coughs> with base e. We can write it as e raised to the natural log of b to the x. So where we got this from is if I take b to the x, I can write this as e raised to the natural log of b to the x. And the reason I can do that is because I have this rule that says the base b any base raised to the log base to b any base is equal to of x is equal to x. So there's, there's our generic rule. So I have b to the x can be wrote as e raised to the natural log, because natural log is base e of b to the x. But we also have this other rule that says if I have the log base b of x to some n power, that n becomes a multiplier. So to get this part right here on that equivalency, I used those two rules combined. This is I'm taking my base b to the x. I'm going to write it as base x. And the way I write that is e raised to the natural log of bx, but then the x comes down out front as a multiplier. And the reason I do that is I can now do the derivative. So the derivative of any base, any base, base 2, base 7, bases have to be positive, of course, and not 1 because that's not interesting. So for any base, then my derivative is b to the x, my base, the natural log of b. So if I asked you to find, if I gave you the function f of x, is equal to 2 to the x. My base is not e. My derivative, however, using that rule is going to be 2 to the x, the natural log of 2. And that's my derivative. And that's it. OK. How are we doing? How are we doing? So if I have a log besides the natural log, so I have any log besides the natural log, then it is going to be 1 over x, the natural <coughs> log of my b value. This is actually true for the natural log is true, uh, natural log is true for when we have e to the x. So our previous one that we learned is if y is equal to the natural log of x, y prime is going to be equal to 1 over x, the natural log of e. But what's the natural log of e? Just 1. So a special case is what we learned yesterday. For all of them, this will hold true for all base, as long as your base is not 1 and greater than 0. We just did the special case yesterday because the natural log of e is 1. So it was the special case. And then if I happen to have a composition of functions, then here's my derivative. So if I have the log base b of u, and I'm going to do the derivative of it, or du, then this is going to be 1 over u, the natural log of b, multiplied by u prime. Which is exactly what that says, but they're using g of x. So as an example, if I asked you to find my function is, say, the, natural, the log base 2 
of 5x squared, then f prime is going to be 1 over 5x squared. That's my inner function u. Multiplied by the natural log of my base, which happens to be 2. Multiplied by my derivative, 5x squared. So that is going to be 10x. This is u. This is u prime. That is the natural log of my base. I do need to clean it up. And when I clean it up, my x's will cancel and my 5 will cancel with a 10, leaving me just 2 over x, the natural log of 2. And that's my final answer. How was that? Is that OK? Practice, maybe? Now, going back to where we started with b raised to the x, if I have my function f of x is b to the u, where u is a function, then my derivative, f prime, is going to be b to the u, the natural log of b multiplied by u prime, which is exactly what that says, but with the g of x. So if I'm asking you to find, as an example, f of x is equal to 2 raised to the 5x squared, then f prime of x is going to be 2 raised to the 5x squared, the natural log of 2, and then multiplying by the derivative of 5x squared, which is 10x. So this part represents my base raised to the u. This is the natural log of my base, and this is my u prime. And I'll stop. So there we go, all of its glory. I'm going to do f, and you all can do the rest, but I'm going to do f. So I'm going to make f larger. So Oh, look at that. The joy never ends. But I'm going to do f. And g isn't that bad. It's just the product rule. g actually is not that bad. So I'm going to do f. Now, remember my derivative d du of the log base b of u is equal to, come back up here, it is equal to 1 over u, the natural log of u, b, u prime. So this is going to be equal to 1 over u, the natural log of my base, u prime. So that's what it equals. So my f prime here is going to be, well, first thing, I have to tell you that this is u. So I should do the derivative of u. So my u is equal to 6x to the fourth plus 3 the quantity to the fifth power. That is u. Not just the inside part. That entire thing is u. So then u prime would be 5, 6x to the fourth plus 3 raised to the fourth power. And then I have to do the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 24 x to the third power. So that is my u prime. So coming back up to my derivative, it is going to be 1 over u. u is 6x to the fourth plus 3 raised to the fifth power. So 6x to the fourth plus 3 raised to the fifth power. That is u. Now it's going to be multiplied by the natural log of my base. What is my base? 7. And then I'm going to multiply it by my derivative of u. My derivative of u was 5 
6x to the fourth plus 3 raised to the fourth power multiplied by 24x <coughs> to the third. So this is u prime, and this is the natural log of b. Yes? You two multiply the 24x to the third by 5? I will, yes, yeah. I'm just, I'm just setting it up so you all see where we are, okay? Now I'm going to do the algebraic cleanup. So the algebraic cleanup here is going to take my 5 and multiply it by the 24x to the third. So what is 5 times 24x to the third? So it's 120x to the third. Now, this to the fourth power will cancel down to make that to a power of 1. So even though it looks nasty right now, it really isn't that bad because it's now going to be over 6x to the fourth plus 3 multiplied by the natural log of 7. So it looked really bad for a moment, but after you do the algebraic cleanup, it's not that bad. And I would not ever multiply the denominator through, ever, unless I'm like forced to, otherwise I don't. Numerators I have to, denominators I don't. Because I hope, I hope against hope, that denominators shake itself out. Okay, so yes? So if I had to do the second derivative, I uh, probably still wouldn't multiply it out, and I'd just do the chain rule a lot. <laughs> Glutton for punishment, I don't know. <laughs> All right, here you go. Please do the first uh, from A to D, please. So on A, nice straightforward derivative, y prime y prime is equal to, using the rule that I have, 2 to the x, the natural log of my base, multiplied by my derivative of x, which is just 1. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll need that for the second one. Now, you don't have to put 1 there. You don't have to put 1 there because the derivative of x is just 1. So this is b to the u. This is the natural log of b. This is u prime. How was A? Okay. Now, with B, I have to use the product rule here. So I need to find the derivative of 4 to the negative x. U prime is going to be 4 raised to the negative x, the natural log of my base, the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. V is sine x. My derivative of sine x is just cosine x. So now I'm going to use the product rule. The product rule then gives me y prime is going to be equal to 4. I'm going to write the negative out front. Is that okay if I write the negative out front? Negative 4 raised to the negative x, the natural log of 4, multiplied by my sine x, and all I did there was u prime v. That's all I did there, was u prime v. So then the second part is going to be the derivative of v, which is cosine x, and it's going to be multiplied by my u, which is 4 raised to the negative x. So this is v prime, and that is u. Okay, if I wanted to, I could factor out, you get, you're shaking your head, if I wanted to, I could factor out a negative 4 raised to the negative x if I was inclined. I'm also inclined to just leave it as it is. Okay, how is that one? Okay, now if I'm looking at p, I'm going to just rewrite p as p is equal to 40 multiplied by 1 plus 2 raised to the negative t. Oh, raised to the negative 1, thank you. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't really care for the quotient rule myself, but if you want to use the quotient rule, that's totally fine. 
Now, in this case, my u is 40. That means my u prime is 0, which means the first term in the product rule is going to go to 0. So I'm not even going to write the first term. My second part, v, is equal to 1 plus 2 raised to the negative t, all raised to the negative 1. And v prime by the chain rule is negative 1. 1 plus 2 raised t raised to 2 raised to the negative t raised to the negative 2. Now that's the derivative of, of my outer function. I need to do the derivative of my inner function. Well, the derivative of 1 is just 0, so I don't have to worry about that part. So I'm going to do the derivative of 2 raised to the negative t. That's going to be 2 raised to the negative t multiplied by the natural log of my base, which is 2, multiplied by my derivative of negative t, which is negative 1. How are we doing? So p prime, or the derivative of p with respect to t, if you like that notation better, is going to be equal to, well, my first term on the product rule is 0, so I don't have to write that. My second term is going to be 40 times negative 1. I'm going to write this negative 2 t raised to the negative t, if that's OK. I'm just going to move that forward. Oh, I have double negative, so it's going to be positive anyways. Oh, that's nice. This negative and this negative will make it positive. So that's kind of nice. And then the natural log of 2, and then multiplied by 1 plus 2, negative t to the negative 2. I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit, because it's just a little ugly. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 40 multiplied by 2 raised to the negative t, natural log of 2, all over 1 plus 2 raised to the negative t, the quantity squared. It just looks a little bit better. How was that one? A little shaky, but OK. All right. So d is the next one. The derivative of the natural log is similar to the derivative of the, um, the log base b. What ends up happening, if you use the exact same rule, which is totally fine, if you use the exact same rule, then dy dx is going to be equal to 1 over 10x multiplied by the natural log of my base, which happens to be e, and then multiplied by my derivative, which happens to be 10. But the log base to e is 1 all day long. So this is just going to be 1. Oh, it's 10 to the x. Oh, 10 to the x. I just like 10x. So 10 to the x. And then the natural log of e. Now I have to do the derivative of 10 to the x, which is 10 to the x, the natural log of 10, multiplied by my derivative of x, which is just 1. What happened to my 10 to the x? What happened to those? They canceled themselves out. And the natural log of e is just 1. So what is my final answer? Natural log of 10. It's not too bad. How are we doing? Yes? Can you go back to the last one we put in? This one here? All right, so the last part of this, the reason we do that is because what we want to do is we want to be able to do derivatives of something like this. And you'll see on your quiz there's something like this. So we're going to use logarithmic differentiation and we're going to use all the laws of logs that we all forgot. 
So here's the laws of logs that we're going to need to use. These are the laws of logs that we are going to need to use in a moment. So if you don't know these off the top of your head, then this would be an opportunity for you to do this. So log based A of M times N, we break it apart with addition. Log base A of M divided by N, we break it apart with division or with subtraction. Those exponents can come out front as multipliers. If my base and what I'm taking the log of is the same, it becomes 1. The log base A of 1 is 0 all day long. The log base A of A to the X is X all day long. And then A raised to the log base A of X equals just X. So as you're building your note card, these might be something you might want to put on there unless you know them off the top of your head. So I'll, I'll pause this and give So if I have to do a differentiation of something this interesting, then the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as y equals the square root of x squared plus 3 minus 5 raised to the fourth power. It is multiplied by 2x minus 1. It is multiplied by x to the 2 thirds minus x plus 7 raised to the fourth power. All divided by 1 minus 4x squared, 7x minus 9x squared. Now the reason I'm going to do replace that with y is we're allowed to take the cosine of both sides. We're allowed to take the sine of both sides, and we are most definitely allowed to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of this side, and I'm going to take the natural log of this side. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to use my laws of logs to break this apart. So this will become the natural log of y is equal to. I will have for the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 3 minus 5. That 4 is an exponent, so it comes down out front as a multiplier. And then plus the natural log of 2x minus 1, because what's going on between those two factors is multiplication. Because multiplication is going on between them, I got to break them up with addition. And then it's going to be plus 4, because that's the exponent, the natural log of x raised to the 2 thirds minus x plus 7. Because in the numerator, I have three factors being multiplied together. So those three factors get broke apart with the rules of logs as addition. All of the exponents get to come down out front as multipliers. Now in the denominator, because it is in the denominator, these become minuses. So it is minus. 2, because that's the exponent in the denominator, the natural log of 1 minus 4x. My second one is still in the denominator, so it's still going to be a minus, so it is minus the natural log of 7x minus 9x squared. And now, doing derivatives is so much easier, because I can do the derivatives of natural logs all day long. The derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u, u prime, all day long. So going to this left-hand side, I need to have 1 over y, and it is the derivative of y, so I can write y prime or dy dx. Then it's going to be 4 is the multiplier, 1 over u. multiplied by the derivative of u. So I'm going to be doing the derivative of this piece. So the derivative of that is going to be 1 half the square root, or actually it'll be 1 half the square root of x squared plus 3 multiplied by 2x. So that's going to be x over the square root of x squared plus 3. That is the derivative of the first term. 
Then I'm gonna do the derivative of the second term, which is one over two x minus one, multiplied by the derivative of two x, which is just two. Then I'm gonna do the derivative of the next one, which is gonna be four, one over x to the two thirds minus x plus seven, multiplied by that derivative, so it'll be two thirds x raised to the negative one third minus one. Yes? Oh, when I do the derivative of that, the derivative of five is zero. Then I'm gonna do the derivative of the next one, so minus two, one over one minus four x, multiply by the derivative of that, which is negative four. And then the last derivative is minus one over seven x minus nine x squared, multiply by seven minus 18 x. So much easier. Could you imagine trying to do that with a chain rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule? Now, there is one last step, and the last step is we are solving for y prime. So what that means is I need to take this lovely thing right here that I just had, and I need to multiply it by y, because I on this side I have one over y there. So I'm solving for y prime. So I need to multiply both sides by y, where y happens to be this lovely thing that I started out with. And there is my final answer. On the one on the take home quiz, for the love of gophers, do not clean it up algebraically. Just do the derivative, do not do cleanup. I'm begging you, have a great day. All right, now that we've done the most difficult one, let's take a look at an easier one. So let's take a look at A. I'm gonna replace f of x with y. So y equals x squared cosine of x. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x squared cosine x. And then using the rules of uh, logs, this is gonna be the natural log of y is equal to between x squared and cosine, it is a multiplication, so I can break that apart as the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of cosine x. I'm gonna go a bit further and bring that exponent down so it's gonna be two, the natural log of x, plus the natural log of cosine x. Now I'm gonna do the derivative. So I'm gonna have one over y dy dx is equal to two, one over x, the derivative of x is just one, plus one over the cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So what I have is one over y dy dx is equal to two over x, and then it's gonna be minus sine x over cosine x. Now I'm solving for dy dx, so I need to multiply both sides by y. So I'm gonna multiply this by y. I'm gonna multiply this by y. But remember that y is actually this value right here. So I have dy dx is equal to two over x minus sine x over cosine x. over cosine x, and then I'm gonna multiply it by x squared cosine x. So what I end up with when I distribute this through is I'm gonna get two x cosine x minus sine x. And then that's gonna be multiplied by x squared. So let me put that in there first. So let me erase this and put in the x squared sine x. Now, I could have done a by doing the product rule, and if I would have done it by the product rule, I would have got the exact same answer. So I probably would not have typically done a with logarithmic differentiation. I, I did to show you that I got the exact same answers if I would have used the product rule, but typically I would not have because this is a pretty straightforward product rule 
cosine x multiplied by x squared. But it does give you practice on doing log logarithmic differentiation. So there's another example for you.